I'm ahead of the curve. In this book review, I will be discussing Bertram Russell's The Problems of Philosophy, and this was published in the year 1912. I wish to preface this video by saying that this is the first book of his that I've actually read, and wow, it's, it's fascinating, really, really fascinating. It won't be the last book of his that I will read either. This book is literally what it appears to be on the front cover. This quite literally is the delving into philosophy. It, it goes into metaphysics, idealism, empiricism, psychology, religion. Russell breaks down the most fundamental claims of philosophy, and he goes into uh, Descartes, for example, and many uh, Greek philosophers, and he really just breaks down what their core teachings are, and he offers his own educated opinion on what he thinks the ancient philosophers got right and what some of them got wrong, with the addition of really, really intriguing and thought-provoking thought experiments throughout. I will be mentioning quite a few quotes from Russell throughout this review, so here's the first one. It will be seen that minds do not create truth or falsehood. They create beliefs. But when once the beliefs are created, the mind cannot make them true or false, except in the special case where they concern future things which are within the power of the person believing, such as catching trains. What makes a belief true is a fact, and this fact does not, except in exceptional cases, in any way involve the mind of the person who has the belief. When I said that Russell really gets to the foundation of what it means to understand what is true and what we can uh, be convinced of what reality is, I meant it. He really does go as deep as, say, uh, Descartes. When, for example, Descartes said, I think therefore I am, he gets to the very bottom, the very groundwork of where you can uplift from what we really know about reality. Russell does the same throughout the book. The following quote is one that doubts knowledge itself, but also has the addition. The following quote is doubting knowledge itself, but with the addition of a metaphysical idea. It is, of course, possible that all or any of our beliefs may be mistaken, and therefore all ought to be held with at least some slight element of doubt. But we cannot have reason to reject a belief except on the grounds of some other belief, by organising our instinctive beliefs and their consequences, by considering which among them is most possible. If necessary, to modify or abandon, we can arrive, on the basis of accepting as our sole data what we instinctively believe, at an orderly, systematic organisation of our knowledge, in which, of error remains, its likelihood is diminished by the interrelation of the parts and by the critical scrutiny which has preceded acquiescence. The final chapter in particular was one that I also had a great interest in, because Russell dedicates it to why philosophy should be valued and why it should be taken seriously. And I talk more about why philosophy works in the first place in my conversation with The Conscious Shift. That's available on my channel, which is about an hour long. So if you want to find out why I think philosophy works practically, why it's worth even reading and thinking about, then go over and head to my interview with The Conscious Shift. So in this chapter on the value of philosophy, Russell writes that practical men don't really see the point in studying it because, well, it's basically just searching for answers that we can't technically know. But one thing that I've never actually realised before, or at least the way that he put it in the book, was how every doctrine begins as a philosophy. And so he makes the point that everything is first a philosophy, or at least it has to be philosophized to become, uh, let's say, biology or chemistry. And so this is probably the best justification of the topic of philosophy that I've ever seen because he makes a point that we need philosophy in order to even realise what doctrines to take seriously or not. Thus, all things must be subject to being philosophised about, to be considered to be a science, or to be any established topic in general. Here's a direct quote from the book that will solidify what I've just said. Philosophy, though unable to tell us with certainty what is the true answer to the doubts which it raises, 
is able to suggest many possibilities which enlarge our thoughts and free them from the tyranny of custom. I just think this is a brilliant way to view philosophy because Russell even writes that if a scientist is asked what in their field that has been um, established as being true, or at least what is their field proven to itself to make it relevant, uh, a biologist could say maybe, I don't know, evolution. Whereas if you were to ask a philosopher what has been proven with philosophy, <laughs> they can't really tell you anything, to be honest. But that is asking the wrong question. Without the consideration of that particular science, such as biology, to be relevant in the first place as a subject, we would not even have this scenario. And so philosophy is required in order to understand what to even study or think about in the first place. And so like any or all philosophical texts, of course this is very dense at times, um, but honestly I had such a fun time reading it because of the thought experiments. Russell's writing is so smooth throughout and it is easy to read, but obviously the, the topic <laughs> is in itself very confusing. So you have to kind of excuse the topic being difficult, but then also accept that Russell's writing is really good in its translating of those ideas. So at least if you get fed up of all the philosophical jargon uh, and the word salads, just remember that this is a very, very short book. Um, I read it in a matter of days. It is really, really short, and for that reason, it's probably one of my favourite philosophy books, just because, again, it's length and it's writing style. And I was just so impressed by Bertrand Russell's writing. It's, um, it, and, and, his, and his thought process as well. It's very, it's very materialistic and empirical, but at the same time, he does actually tackle the metaphysical claims that a lot of theologians might make. So it's not like he just disregards these metaphysical claims that the religious make, he actually has good arguments against it most of the time. So yeah, this is a very short review in comparison to most of my other videos, but I just wanted to advertise the book, I suppose, and advertise Russell as a philosopher and writer, and basically a polymath. I just really, really enjoyed this book, and I'd 100% recommend anyone who likes philosophy like I do, metaphysics, religion, to pick this up, um, or at least get the PDF online, because it really is a worthwhile read in the sect of philosophy. So I hope you enjoyed watching this shorter video of mine, but I hope that I have motivated you to at least check out the book online and to see whether it's your cup of tea. I've been ahead of the curve, make sure to look at my description of the video for my Goodreads, my Instagram and my Patreon where you can get monthly benefits available to you by signing up. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.